I guarantee you, Traveler, that this is the best No Man's Sky Waypoint New Player's Beginner's Guide that you are ever going to see on the internet. From a fresh save, we are going to money cap, make hundreds of thousands of nanites, upgrade a ton of our technology as well as all of our cargo slots. I'm going to teach you how to get an awesome S-Class ship as well as max out the technology and cargo. I'll show you where you can get your very own Death Cheddar and S-Class multi-tool. You can actually change the skins on this thing. I believe you can change it to five different skins. I'm even going to teach you how you can get yourself a guaranteed free S-Class capital ship. I went with the Sentinel version. You can also get it in the Super Star Destroyer like in Star Wars. We're also going to build an awesome base on this freighter. This new player's beginner's guide for No Man's Sky Waypoint will contain absolutely no storyline spoilers, so as a new player, you're free to discover those on your own. The awesome thing about the Waypoint update is that any time you are able to change the settings on the save, making it more difficult or easy if you prefer. On this fresh save, I'm going to be playing in normal mode, which is about what 90% of pretty much everybody plays when they play No Man's Sky. I'm not going to be changing any of the settings whatsoever. We're just going to be playing regular normal mode, which I heard is slightly more difficult, so let's check that out. Alright, let's do this. All right, Traveler, in the beginning, you're going to spawn on some random planet or moon. All your stuff's going to be completely busted up, and you're going to need to find oxygen and sodium as soon as possible so, you know, you don't fall over and die. Once you stop spinning, the direction that you are facing is the direction of your crashed ship. Not only do we have to worry about survival, we need to farm some carbon as well as some ferrite dust so we can repair our multi-tool. Our scanner and our analysis visor is broken, and those are two handy pieces of technology to get sorted out and fixed early on. They will definitely help you to survive. Now, if you noticed, I'm not freaking out too much about my sodium and oxygen right now, although my daggone hazard protection is falling rapidly, and if that gets to zero, I'm going to start taking damage. I found what I saw looked like a cave nearby, right over there to my left. Caves will refresh your hazard protection and there are also hazardous flora in there. Those will give you all kinds of oxygen and sodium, so I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get that sorted. Alright, well, that kind of sucks. Doesn't look like this is a cave. I hope I can at least hide under the very edge of the lip. That will at least stop me from taking all this hazard damage. Cha-ching! That worked. Let's see what we can do about getting this scanner fixed. Looks like I need a little bit more ferrite dust for that. We're going to have to install new technology for the analysis visor. And for that, we only need one carbon nanotube. So that should be super duper easy to whip up at this point. There we go. Now all we have to do is hop back over to our multi-tool and get that carbon nanotube plugged into our broken analysis visor. Cha-ching! Now we can actually scan for secondary elements. The other cool things that you can find in these cave locations are something like these humming sacks or vortex cubes. Go ahead and loot these. These will give you albium pearls right here. You can sell these for a decent amount of starting cheddar. Out in the world, you're going to run across these crates over here. They're going to help you to survive. That white one there will actually replenish your health. The green one inside will give you random items. You're also going to want to keep that rusted metal in the beginning, mostly because it can be turned into ferrite dust. We won't be able to loot any of those cylinder containers for now. Don't worry, I'll show you how to get the Volume 1 Atlas Pass later. Since ain't nobody got time for wasting their time, let me show you how to actually mine faster. It is really important because overall you're going to be doing a lot of mining early on in the beginning, and if you can do that faster, well, you're going to get more materials much quicker. Notice how I'm trying to keep the beam at the very top end just before it overheats I let go of the trigger then heat it back up again just before it overheats I let go of the trigger I keep doing that over and over this is the ultimate way to farm well you know as long as you totally don't screw up and overheat your beam because then you have to stand around with your thumb in your nose waiting for it to cool down. Yeah, this little lip I'm hiding under is coming in totally clutch. Now I can get my scanner repaired. Haven't even worried about getting any sodium or oxygen yet. Generally, I would definitely be a dead traveler right now. Since we got the scanner fixed, let's pop off a scan so we can see if we can find any sodium or oxygen. That NA in the background is the sodium, and that H right there is the hydrogen. Well, unfortunately, we did not see any oxygen floating around out there, so I'm going to be using my analysis visor to scan absolutely everything. All the minerals, all the plants, and all the animals, and since I'm under the safety of this lip right here, I don't have to worry about losing any hazard. 
or oxygen, so that's, you know, a plus. The other thing you want to keep your eyes peeled for when you're running around out in the worlds are these pieces of damaged machinery. They'll either give you straight up nanites, modules you can sell for nanites, and they'll always have this slime that can be refined down into nanites. Dihydrogen is used to craft rocket fuel as well as other crafting recipes. You want to make sure that you have a half decent amount of this on hand because, you know, if you can't take off, you can't explore the galaxy. Finally, looting our very first piece of sodium. Don't we made it to our crash ship location. Each and every time you make a new save, there will always be four oxygen plants just chilling out right next to your ship, so you can always count on that, Traveler. If you have never played No Man's Sky before, this is where you're going to encounter your very, very first piece of the story. So yeah, we'll just skip that. Technically, we're supposed to hop in our ship and get that quest started, but instead I'm going to go check out this cave over here. Oh sweet, it actually looks like a cave. We're going to be able to farm up a bunch of that marrow bulb, which can be turned into sodium. I'm also going to need a half decent amount of cobalt, silver, gold, and platinum, but before we do that, we're going to need to scan all the stalagmites and stalactites. After we scanned all the stalagmites and stalactites, I found out that the secondary element for this cobalt here is silver, and since we need a bunch of silver later on, that is totally and completely glorious. This is a prime example of why you use the analysis visor on everything as soon as possible. Aha! We found a big giant patch of these hazardous flora. Might as well take the opportunity to stock up on as much oxygen and the sodium as I can. You definitely want to kill each and every one of these things because they're totally and completely evil, so make them pay for being evil. Whenever you're out here farming for cobalt, you're going to notice you're going to get these geodes here. You just need to analyze them. You're going to either get cobalt or ionized cobalt, which is worth even more. So, you know, it's kind of nice. Hopping back into your ship will start you on your quest to get your launch thrusters and pulse engine completely fixed and sorted. Now, this doesn't have any storyline spoilers in it, so I'm going to go ahead and show this part right here. But ultimately, you just need to repair your ship systems before you can really proceed further. Now, there are a few things we can make on our own, like the metal plating and the dihydrogen jelly, although we cannot get that hermetic seal until we complete the quest. First things first, I'm going to make a metal plating, not to repair my ship, but to actually make a portable refiner. That's a piece of technology that you can turn the ferrite dust into pure ferrite, which is something we need to repair our ship. Your portable refiner does require fuel, so you can put either condensed carbon or regular carbon in there in order for it to work. Then all you have to do is plop some ferrite dust in there, hit the begin button, and it'll turn into pure ferrite. Farmed a little bit while that was cooking up. Looks like my pure ferrite dust is totally good to go. Cha-ching. Let's get the launch thrusters repaired with that pure ferrite we just made, and the dihydrogen jelly can be crafted from just regular dihydrogen crystals. In order to fix the pulse engine as much as we can, all we need to do is craft a metal plating. We'll get that sorted. We're going to be able to get the hermetic seal in just a bit. Once you have repaired three out of the four broken parts, you just need to hop back into your ship, and it's going to start the very next part of your quest, which is going to help you find the hermetic seal. Once you request assistance, it's going to recommend that you go back out there and talk to that totally and completely psycho red glowing orb. This time it won't contain any storyline, but what it will contain is a planetary chart that you need to use in order to locate the building that the Hermetic Seal is in. Once you finish interacting with the red globe and get all that red electricity and orb juice all over you, you will have a planetary chart that you can examine inside of your inventory. Examining it will throw you way up in the sky. The cool thing is, is if you see another building that's closer than the one that's marked, you can actually go there. And I saw one that's about halfway there, so we're going to go there instead. Alright, here we are at the other location. This is the big test to see if you can still get it at another location than the one that's marked. So, you know, guess we're going to figure that out here in just a second. And yep, sure enough, in the Waypoint update, you can still get it at a different location. It's just whatever location you go to first, I guess, and check the little what's supposed to be a nanite machine there. While we're at it, might as well learn another word. Never hurts to know as many words as you possibly can in No Man's Sky. Another handy bit of information, if you are going to go to the marked location, about halfway there, there's going to be a totally and completely horrible storm, so make sure that you prepare for that with enough sodium. Made it back to my crash ship location. This storm is still blazing like crazy. Before we get that hermetic seal plopped in there, let's turn this rust into some ferrite dust. Yeah, definitely gonna hop into my ship before all my daggone skin falls off from this radiation. Now let's get this pulse engine fixed. There we go. Our ship is 100% ready to take off. 
I will generally only loot that rust early on in the game so I can turn it into ferret dust. After I get all that sorted, I don't bother with it anymore. Now let's get that marrow bulb turned into sodium because we're going to need boatloads of that. Let's now refine down a bunch of the slime we've been collecting through our gameplay. This stuff is, you know, can be turned into nanites, but it's a long convoluted process that takes forever. There's so many stages of it. I generally don't worry about it. Yep, I'm just gonna farm and scan things until that stuff refines. And finally, the viscous slime turned into living slime, so I can now process all of the living slime I have into runaway mold. And since that's gonna take a month of Sundays and I don't feel like just standing around, I might as well upload some of my discoveries that I've made during this gameplay for nanites. At this point, I'm going to upload all of the flora, all of the minerals, and all of the animals that I've found so far during this playthrough. Now, it's not going to be a lot of nanites, but every little bit of nanites helps. What seems like 10 lifetimes later, the runaway mold is finally done. Of course, I ran out of fuel because this stuff takes for freaking ever to process. All of that work for 45 nanites. And just think, we didn't even refine any of that base green slime that I have a little bit in my backpack. That would have taken even longer. So yeah, as long as the slime's concerned, don't bother. It is now time to make like a tree and leave. We have our ship totally and completely sorted. I have a half decent amount of supplies, so let's take off and fly straight up through the atmosphere. Let the hand holding begin, something that No Man's Sky does really good. Right now it's trying to teach you how to fly your ship properly. Once we complete all three stages, you can start the first part of your Awakenings quest. After you complete a little storyline dialogue, you will be given some coordinates that you need to fly towards. Now, we're not going to worry about that quite yet. First of all, we're going to find an asteroid field, which they're pretty much everywhere in No Man's Sky. We're going to be blowing up a whole bunch of them in order to get gold, silver, as well as tritium. Now, I'll generally do this for about 10 to 15 minutes just to make sure I have all the resources I need. Alright, farming's done. Mostly wanted to make sure I had enough tritium. And speaking about tritium, we'll get these hyper clusters, which will turn into more tritium, which is pretty handy. And I also got this gold nugget here, which obviously turns into gold and a little bit of platinum. If you don't want to piss off your fat cells, instead of landing over there at the signal source, just look for a little building that has a piece of damaged machinery nearby. This is most definitely the location. This is going to save you from running all over the daggone place, you know, saving you time and keeping you nice and fat. I looted all the containers and I'm like, bro, I can't find the daggone piece of machinery. It looks like I landed directly on top of it. A little bit of storyline later, you will unlock the base computer as well as your terrain manipulator. Um, yeah, definitely gonna get that terrain manipulator put in there as soon as possible. In order to do that, we just needed a hydrogen jelly as well as two carbon nanotubes. The terrain manipulator is actually a pretty handy piece of technology. It can manipulate the ground around you, either take it away or add to it. We're gonna be taking it away here in just a little bit to farm a whole bunch of these buried technology modules. A great way to get oxygen is farming these gassy pods on these exploding plants. Just make sure that you're not near that when it kind of blows up. And after you're done, you can totally nuke it with your mining laser to get even more oxygen. Just make sure to keep your eyes on a swivel because this new normal mode is kind of brutal. The drop you get from killing aggressive animals like that feline liver is actually worth quite a bit. Alright, time to dig a big giant hole in the ground so we can get this buried technology. In order to kill two birds with one stone, we're going to be looking for damaged machinery. You can always find buried technology near there. Yep, the constant struggles for life. I am always getting attacked by these aggressive animals. It's like they're just bringing me units. I really appreciate it, guys. Alright, so the damaged machinery is right there. And see what I mean? There's always buried technology nearby. So we get to come over here and mooch that up really quick. And then run over here and see if it has nanites or a module for us. Now I know I said earlier you can always get slime when you open up these damaged machineries, but you can also get space turds as well. And for every buried technology you find, you will find at least one to four salvage data. Well, looks like I need to get a little scanning on. Sodium is life. Well, you know, unless I create some ion batteries, which I guess I'll show you here in just a little bit. But first, we are going to mine up this copper deposit here with our terrain manipulator. And it's really important that you use the small bubble. Now, on keyboard and mouse, in order to get the small bubble, you're going to be pressing R. And in order to increase the size, you can press T. 
the smaller the bubble you use on the terrain manipulator, the more resources you will gather from where you're trying to gather them, although it will take longer. It is definitely worth using the smaller bubble. It is also most definitely worth your time to create some life support jellies. I should have done this much earlier in this playthrough, so I didn't piss away a whole bunch of my oxygen, although I didn't use a whole lot. Now it only takes the hydrogen jelly and carbon to make the life support gel, so it is worth making them as soon as you possibly can. You need to conserve oxygen as quickly as possible. Man, like no joke, this was legit the biggest copper deposit I have ever mined in my no man's sky life. Like here in just a second you're gonna see the literal hole that I'm in. I might even be all the way down to space China at this point. No, just need to clean up a few of the scraps here and there and check that out. Look at the sky. Like this sheer volume of copper we have. I almost have 3,000 copper from this one deposit. That's totally and completely ridiculous. Back on the hunt for more damaged machinery. This next tip will help you travel around faster, so make sure you're running, mash your attack key, then hold down your space bar for your rocket pack. Just make sure you have enough rocket boost at the end or you can kill yourself. Another damage machinery later and it looks like it totally and completely hooked us up fat with an S-Class bolt caster module. Got an A-Class movement, freaking slime, get the hell out of my bag. Got all these crystal fragments from farming up the dihydrogen crystals. The glowing mineral came from a buried mineral formation. And wow, we got super lucky with that iridescite. Oh yeah, and this happened on the very next damaged machinery. That is an awesome upgrade and S-Class mining beam module. We're gonna stuff that right into our multi-tool right now. When placing new modules anywhere, you always want to make sure that you place similar modules next to each other because you'll get an even bigger bonus. Notice when they're placed together, they light up. That means something. So yeah, kind of embarrassing. I haven't made these ion batteries yet, and it only takes cobalt and ferrite dust, which is totally all over the freaking place. So yeah, make these as soon as possible in order to conserve as much sodium as you possibly can. Ion batteries are all about charging your hazard protection. Every now and then you're going to be using your analysis visor and you're going to come across these two star points of interest. This one happens to be organic rocks and boy did I screw the pooch on that one. Make sure that you have plenty of inventory space before you mine these because in most cases the stuff you're going to be mining like this chlorine here is going to be worth half decent amount of money for a noob like you in the beginning. Unfortunately, the No Man's Sky Waypoint update did nerf pretty much every item in the game when it comes to selling it and its value, just like this chlorine here. Now, it's still going to be worth a half decent amount, and we're getting tons when we're mining these, so yeah, gonna mine it all up. The very first planet or moon you start on, you're not gonna get attacked by aggressive animals, but I tell you, the moment you leave, you're just gonna get freaking attacked all the time. And why looky there, I found myself a nice salt deposit. I'm gonna mine all this up for those daggone mean aggressive animals. You know, they're so freaking salty. Plus this stuff's worth a half decent amount of money. Might as well mine up this phosphorus too. Oops, I used the big bubble. I need to use the smaller bubble. Yeah, this stuff is actually gonna come in handy later in the video. And since it's here, I'm gonna mine it up. Before we build our very first base, I just need to hop over here at the space station, sell a whole bunch of crap so I can have room in my bags. Man, you're going to be struggling with bag space in the beginning. The first thing I'm going to do is sell all the freaking bajillions of feline livers that I have from getting attacked by aggressive animals. I have some on myself in my bag and I even stuff some in my ship as well. Let's quickly switch over to my ship's inventory, and looky there, I have a hundred of them on my ship. Let's pawn off that iridescite. Man, that was such a great score. And we'll get rid of this Mordite. You get that from killing those animals. Last but not least, make sure that you have a total of five microprocessors. We're going to need those in just a bit. In the very early game, the struggles to make money is actually pretty real, so you need to be open to all the opportunities that you can possibly come across. This is going to be one of them here. If you have the extra space cheddar, make sure that you buy these metals at a discount like the Aronium and the Dirty Bronze, Mango Gold, stuff like that. You're going to be able to actually refine that and then turn it over for a profit. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the personal refiner yet, so we can't refine this right here and right now, but we are going to be building a base here in just a little bit, so I'm going to refine it all there. Hunting for your very first base location is generally key. I like to either build by a miner's settlement or a trading post, and that little antenna right there is going to help me find a miner's settlement. 
So why build next to a miner settlement or a trading post? Well, it's quite simple, my dear Watson. Both of those locations have galactic trade terminals. You're going to be able to buy and sell much easier before you actually get the trade rocket. Most important though, a lot of the technology that you need to build early on, well, you're gonna need microprocessors and those are easily found on trade terminals. The other cool thing about miner settlements is, well, you can buy all kinds of technology blueprints here early on. Yep, we are most definitely buying that advanced mining laser. I'm pretty much going to probably buy most everything else here, except for the bolt caster ionizer. I don't really use the bolt caster that much, but you know, I'll buy everything else. Let's get that advanced mining laser installed. Now, I just need two more wiring looms to finish it up. Stuff that I was able to buy right off the galactic terminal there. See what I mean? Here's an S-Class scanner module that I found while I was farming all those damaged machineries. Now, I'm just going to stuff it in there. Every time we scan stuff now, I'm going to make a lot more money. While we're at it, we might as well get the waveform recycler all sorted. That's going to actually extend my scan range as well as shorten the scan recharge. That's pretty awesome. It's finally that time, travelers. We are going to create our epic Bob Box base, but first we must claim the territory with a base computer. Now this just makes sure that no other travelers are in the area, you know, and have already claimed it, because if they did, you're not going to be able to build here. Honestly, though, the chances of that happening are super duper mega slim. I would say like 99.99 .99 repeating forever. You know, you barely run into anybody in the very beginning stages of the game, even though it's multiplayer. But hey, it looks like this location is free. So this is where we're going to be building our base. Before we build our epic Bob Box base, let's plop down a portable refiner really quick. I want to refine that aronium down to silver, and that way we can at least get that sorted and out of the way before I forget, and then, you know, I'm up on the space station and I can't do it then. Once you interact with your base computer again, after you've already claimed the territory, it's going to have a little bit of storyline, so we'll skip that. Once you complete it, you're going to be getting all your wooden base parts that you need to build your epic Bob box. So yeah, Bob and I are good at a lot of things in No Man's Sky, but you know, building is just not for us. That's why we build the epic Bob box. While you're building your very first Bob box, it is worth noting that the second you place your very first piece, you're going to get a notification of a storm. Here it goes right now. You better have enough hazard protection or a place to hide if you can't build your base quick enough. There we go. Bob box is now complete. All we need are some space pole dancers. Interacting with your base computer again will give you the construction research unit. It only takes magnetized ferrite and carbon nanotubes to make the construction research unit, and you can make that magnetized ferrite from pure ferrite. Now at this point, it's going to tell you you need to go out in the world to find buried technology, but since you're a prepared traveler like myself, you already have all that stuff sorted. At this point, you want to buy absolutely everything except for the health and the hazard station. The first piece of technology we're going to build is the base teleport module. After that, we will build the biofuel reactor, and right next to the biofuel reactor, we're going to place at least one to two batteries. Next, you can do a little wiring. Now, what you want to do is make sure that you wire your biofuel reactor to your battery, and then wire that other battery to the other battery. From your back battery, wire that directly to your teleport module. Next, head outside and hop on the top of your Bob Box. We're going to be building at least two or three solar panels. That way, we'll be able to supply our base with power. Once you have all your solar panels plopped down, you can get them all wired together. Then run that one wire on the inside. If you kind of care what wires look like, you can try to hide them along the wall. Then make sure you wire it into your battery. Whole bunch of storyline later after you interact with your base computer again. Now it's going to want you to go to a space station in order to talk to three different NPCs. We're going to be doing that in just a bit. As soon as we get our biofuel reactor all charged up, because you know, it's nighttime and my solar panels don't work right now. So as long as you landed on the space station before you built your teleporter, you're going to be able to teleport directly there. This is going to save you a little bit of time of flying there, which is totally and completely awesome. Before we talk to any of the NPCs, I'm going to sell some of this silver here to recover my money back. Let's sell a few of these salvage data just so I can have a little extra space cheddar. I'm about to talk to three NPCs. Now it's super important that you don't talk to any of them that are in the booths or you'll never be able to talk to them again. 
just finished talking to the three random NPCs that are not in the booth, taking the time to stock up on a little bit of this aronium again so we can make a little more space bones. And I seriously can't believe I didn't do this the very first time I was here. Every single time you come to a new system, you are able to upgrade your exosuit slots. To free up more bag space, let's hit the cell tab over here on this module vendor. I'm going to get rid of that bolt caster and movement module just so I can have some more nanites. And why looky there, they even have a life support module for sale. Let's get that stuffed right in there and making sure that I'm putting it right next to my other oxygen tank. Interacting with your base computer again will let you know that life signs have been detected. In order to appease your inner fat traveler, instead of landing at the signal source location, you know that it's going to be a crash freighter, so just land here. Now let's run over and have a chat with the pulsating red ball once again. Doing so will reward you with the hyperdrive blueprint. In order to install the hyperdrive, you are going to need chromatic metal as well as five microprocessors. Chromatic metal can be created by refining copper. So like, there's a bunch of containers you can farm here. Generally, they're not worth it, but you know, for posterity, I'll go ahead and show y'all just, you know, how worthless they can totally and completely be. You can locate all these cargo pods using your analysis visor, and most of them are going to be buried in the ground, so you're going to have to dig them out. The other thing you want to make sure you do just before you open it up is you get just about as far away as you possibly can. You can see that I'm just like not wanting to be near this thing. The main thing is once you repair it after you take all the slime and other crap that's going to be in there, you're going to be hit with a massive, massive dose of radiation. And if you don't get your little traveler butt out of there, you're going to get totally and completely nuked and, you know, you could probably die from it. See what I mean? That radiation dose is no joke, so get away as quick as you can. Now we only got 20 nanites on that last one, so let's try once again for posterity. Usually these pretty much suck. Generally they just give you nanites or money or some random item, and that right there is actually pretty good. That's a multi-tool expansion slot. Man, I'm gonna like take back all the horrible things I've said about these cargo containers. Once you're done fooling around there at that crash freighter, head back up into space, do a scan, then you're gonna be directed to go to the antimatter trace. Same method as before, once you get near the trace, what you're going to be looking for is an actual building, so make sure you keep your fat cells happy. You don't want to piss them off, man. Skinny people piss off fat cells. Before we head inside, we're going to be farming up these whisperling eggs, so make sure that you have your tray manipulator out, then get the biggest bubble set and build a diagonal path all the way to the very center of the building, right underneath of it. We're going to be doing this to absolutely every single egg cluster that we find that goes around this little abandoned building. I have all my downward sloping tunnels all set up. Might as well just come in here and get the antimatter blueprint after I destroy all this disgusting green slime that completely and totally wastes our time to refine. A little more storyline later, we have received our antimatter blueprint. Time to farm up these whisperling eggs. I'm right in the very middle underneath of the building there. Now most of these creatures on the initial spawn are going to spawn above ground. If any of them spawn underground, just buck them with extreme prejudice, then they'll respawn above ground. Now you should be totally safe at this point. All you have to do is shoot the egg sacks, the actual egg will roll down to you. Then you can loot the larval core. These are worth a lot of money or nanites, so they are most definitely worth farming. Unfortunately, I only received 13 larval cores. This was a small building, so if you find a big one, you can get twice as many. If you're lucky enough to find a big building, I highly recommend that you plop down a save beacon. This will make it so much easier to find this place again. And then you can farm either a bunch of money or nanites or both. The game is going to want you to create a warp cell. So in order to do that, you're going to need to create an antimatter housing. Make sure that you have an antimatter on you. Then you can create the warp cell. Once you feel your hyperdrive, the next part of the quest can begin. And I might as well, you know, recharge my launch booster. It's time to open up your Galaxy Map Traveler. We are going to be making our very first hyperdrive jump. And since we started in a Gek system, we're either going to want to look for a Viking or a Korvac system to hop to next. I like the Viking for so many reasons. They're the complete and total hookup, so let's just go there first. As soon as you arrive in your system, you'll be contacted by some strange traveler. Immediately accept their guidance. This will give you directions to the fuel source. 
hop onto the space station and either upgrade an exosuit slot or a technology slot. The struggles are real right now for cargo space, so I'm going to upgrade that. Let's check the NPC to see if he has any useful modules, and oh my goodness, like I said, the Viking or the total and complete hookup. I got really lucky here. This is pretty much every single upgrade that I really need right in the beginning. Yep, I'm definitely going to rename this place right now to the hookup. Not gonna lie, we got really lucky. This is a special system here. Now, if you want to find any other nanites or navigational data, just loot the blue and orange globes as well as the black plates that you find. The other reason why the Viking or the total and complete hookup is they will have these nanite machines in the back room. There's one here and one on the other side. I'm feeling broke as a space joke right now, so I'm gonna sell a few odds and ends like the Gek Relic and all that silver and stuff. We'll also get rid of the platinum, that's probably a big mistake. Now we could sell the larval cores, but you know, I think I'm gonna hold on to those just a little while longer. Before heading out to the fuel source, I decided to talk to these little ship guys here, and I found a dude selling mango gold at a discount. Well, we can refine that down to gold in its base form and then make a profit on it later, so you know, can't help myself, I need to buy it all right now. We're almost to the fuel source, I just need to get through these daggone clouds, and why looky there, that's a trading post. Now that is a really awesome find, and considering it's right next to where we're going, might as well land right here. Brace yourselves, fat cells, this probably means I'm gonna have to run to find the fuel source. Refined down a whole bunch of crap and also made this base without walls here. Pretty much has everything I need if I ever want to come back to the trading post again. Oh yeah, I'm all sweaty and my fat cells are totally pissed off now. But if you want to be able to actually find the place like the game wants you to find it, you just need to whip out your analysis visor. So instead of running, look for the big giant black alien looking monolith. While you're at it after you land, you might as well come over here. There'll be three knowledge stones. You'll be able to learn at least three words of that specific race. Once you have finished up learning all the free words that you possibly can, head over to the main section of the monolith where you can interact with it and complete the quest. If you answer this question wrong that the monolith is about to ask you, you will need to reload your save. If you answer it correctly like I did off camera, you'll get a warp cell. Time to head to another system, we're gonna hit up the Corvax, which are the bleeding hearts of the galaxy. Buy my freaking liver, bro, you know you wanna buy my liver. Even though you're a machine, you're probably gonna eat it. Let's totally and completely upgrade another cargo slot, because you know, can't have enough room, especially when it comes to cargo. Once you head back outside, you're gonna be contacted by a mysterious alien, and as soon as you finish up that little bit of the story, you're gonna be directed to finally finish the very last leg of the Awakenings quest. When flying into this location, what you're looking for is a crash ship with a signal beacon. There'll also be a damaged piece of machinery nearby, and when you interact with these things, you also have a really good chance of getting a piece of technology, which is great. It looks like this time we got the Pulse Splitter, which is basically my favorite weapon for the multi-tool. Yeah, I totally forgot that I put that S-Class upgrade for my scanner in there. Let's just see how much I get for Fauna. <laughs> now that's not bad, that's 114k for one single scan. I'd buy that for a dollar. Alright, let's check out and see if this ship is even worth it. And unfortunately, it's a C-Class. Of course, they're always going to be completely busted up, but it's free. Let's claim this ship. Now, it should have some technology on it. I think I saw at least one piece that I can destroy, so we're going to destroy that. That'll give us some free resources. Then we can just repair the launch thrusters, as well as the pulse engine, and then we can get that thing flown up to the space station and scrap for a whole bunch of space cheddar. Time to do one of my favorite things I love to do in No Man's Sky, and that's scrapping ships. Now, when you claim this scrap on your ship, it's not going to just straight up give you all the money right in your back. Instead, it's going to give you a bunch of scrap items that you can sell to little ship guys, as well as some modules. Time to sell some of this gold. Now, I'm going to eat a little bit into my profit margin by, like, saving some of this. I made the mistake of selling all my silver, and I'm not going to make the mistake of selling all my gold. So, we're going to keep a little bit of that. Nah, nanites are really nice, those are easy to get, but right now I need money, so I'm just gonna sell these larval cores. Wouldn't you know it, when I'm totally poor, one of these awesome S-Class exotics fly in, man, I think that's a max slot one too. Alright, took the time to completely and totally repair absolutely everything that I could. Now, just a note to you in the future, don't repair the technology section, because that doesn't increase the value of your ship. 
before all the repairs it was worth 1.3 mil I think now that all the repairs are completed it's worth 3.2 now that's pretty good although I could have saved some of those materials by not repairing the technology section but you know past me didn't know about that right now me he knows about it looks like we ended up with four c-class modules that we can sell over here on this vendor that's another reason why I like scrapping ships it's such an easy way to make nanites now it goes without saying, the better ships you scrap, like B, A, and S class, you're gonna get better modules to make more nanites. Let's sell all this ship scrap that we got on this little ship guy here. Oh yeah, feeling a lot less poor right now. Once you claim that crash ship, you're gonna be contacted by some dude named Nada. Now I've been putting this off for a little bit because he's a total and complete stalker. After you talk with him, you're free to summon the Space Anomaly. Now this place is totally and completely awesome. It's gonna really, really help you during your gameplay. With that said, it can actually be a little too much help to your gameplay if you happen to fly in there and some person gives you like billions of dollars worth of stuff for free, so that's why I have multiplayer turned off right now. You know, I don't want to be tempted to get a bunch of stuff for free, leave that out of the footage, and then go, hey guys, look how rich I am, I'm totally awesome and rich, right? So I'm going to turn that on later once we get a little bit more established. Once you get here, head upstairs and talk to Nada. After that, he's going to want you to go over there and talk to Polo. After you chew the fat with Polo, head downstairs and talk to Ares. He is going to want all of your milestone data, and at this point, you should have quite a few milestones. You're just about to be hooked up fat with a whole bunch of nanites. Last but kind of least, you want to head over to Helios. He is going to want all of your planetary data, and at this point we haven't gotten a lot of that, so we're not going to get hooked up very fat right here. Yeah, wah wah, only 120 nanites. Head to the back of the anomaly and talk to Selene here. We're going to be getting a few exosuit upgrades. First buy the hazmat gauntlet, even though you'll never really need to use it. You most definitely want to snag up the personal refiner. Then if you want, grab the trade rocket. The other awesome thing about the anomaly is you can upgrade your exosuit slots and, you know, the struggles are still real, so I think I'm gonna get another cargo slot. Hit up the construction unit, there are definitely a couple things we're gonna wanna get here. Look for the place that is gonna sell the medium refiner, and then right after you do that, purchase up the large refiner. Hook up with the Romer Geobay, this thing's actually really awesome at being an extra storage unit. Once you have all those upgrades, locate the teleport terminal. It's super duper hard to miss. Once you get there, you're going to be heading right back to your base. At this point, we are going to start trying to make some real money, not just the nickel and dimes we've been making so far. From now on, I will not be progressing the main storyline any further. I'm only going to be focusing on these computer-based archive quests, which give you, like, modules and also useful technology that you can build and use, much like this really awesome storage container we get for free. I just placed three medium refineries. We're going to finish everything up here by placing two large refineries. This will help us make a little bit of money. In the last patch, refining with oxygen made a whole boatload of money. Unfortunately, in this patch, you can't really buy any oxygen. Anyways, with that being said, I still farmed up a half-decent amount of oxygen. I think I have just under 2,000 worth. Now, I'm going to turn some of the salt here into chlorine, which will make it worth more. Although, with oxygen, you know, being really hard to get, I'm not exactly convinced quite yet that this is really worth it. We'll be turning as much of our cobalt as we can into ionized cobalt, and while we're at it, we'll turn more of that chlorine into, you know, even more chlorine, wasting all of our oxygen. Ended up with an okay amount of chlorine as well as ionized cobalt. You know, guess I'm not going to complain too much. Before we become Space Daddy Warbucks, I want you to head over to the Stellar Cartographer here. We're going to be buying some charts. First, you want to check what random chart they drop because they're not really random. They'll always drop that exact same chart. It's just each place drops different charts. That one is a red building. That's a commercial building. We're not really looking for that one right there. If you use navigational data, you can actually purchase a specific chart that you want. We want the crash ship location. That's the chart that we're going to want. It's the second one down from the top. Buy as many of these as you can afford. Of course, it'd be really nice if you can find a system that just randomly always sells you these. I'll take the time to track down a system just like that, but for now, we have a bunch of navigational data, so I'm just going to burn those. I mean, I just had to know, this place is called the Hookup after all. Let's see what kind of chart he's going to drop. Now, I'm willing to bet, since this is the Hookup, he's going to drop exactly what we want, and of course he does, so yeah. 
now we found a really cool place to buy a whole bunch of these charts. Might as well head over to the ultimate hookup vendor and buy one of these S-Class movement modules, you know, just because. Let's get that slapped in there, because you know, you can never have too much rocket boost. I've heard great things about the trade rocket, so we might as well get that thing totally and completely installed into our exosuit. Of course, I'm probably not even going to use this thing, because I'm going to forget that I have it. Using these charts are super duper easy. All you have to do is just plot the course on the actual chart itself, and it'll bring up a random location. An abandoned building is not what we're looking for. I mean, they're really good money, but you've already seen that already. For now, we're going to be used spaceship dealers where we scrap all the biggest pieces of crap spaceships across the universe. If you get here and you see a little space dude walking around, that means you're not going to be able to claim this ship for free. Ultimately, he's just going to want to be a freeloader and get you to fix it for him. So if you see anybody on the ground, just fly over it and then pop another chart. This is another one of those kill two birds with one stone methods. I'm trying to make money by scrapping ships, also getting nanites, but I'm also trying to get free technology like this awesome economy scanner here. Now fighters are generally worth quite a bit of money, so let's hope it's not a C class, which totally sucks because the C class isn't worth near as much. Now well, I guess it is what it is. We'll just claim this ship because, you know, it's for free and all. Yeah, decided not to repair anything on this one since it's a C-Class. We'll just, you know, hook it up with 2.6 million. That was pretty quick. Ended up finding a cadmium drive when we claimed this ship. Since it was a B-Class, I decided to go ahead and fix everything, except for the technology section, because I finally learned my lesson. And then it happened. It was love at first sight. An A-Class shuttle. Even though it was completely and totally ugly on the outside, she was totally beautiful on the inside. I'm now also faced with another awkward decision. Now I can run over here and claim my ship right back for free because you know, old bugs that's never been fixed in like forever and ever. Whatever, I'm gonna sleep really good at night knowing that I made all that money to earn that very first ship and you know, now this is just the bonus, the icing on the cake. Good night, Radiant Pillar. Good work, sleep well. I'll most likely scrap you in the morning. Oh wait, that's today. Sorry, man. Since we're a little more powerful in this A-Class shuttle, I decided to try my hand at a little piracy. Since I don't really care too much about the Corvax and what they think about me blowing up their daggone freighters, I decided to beat up on them since I'm here, you know, in this system right now. Now, I could be testing this out in a black market system. I heard it's a bit more profitable in the Waypoint update. You'll also not have any of these daggone Sentinels constantly attacking you when you're trying to blow up all these little cargo pods. I don't know, we're out there for about four or five minutes. We didn't do too bad. The glorious thing is, is we got a salvage frigate module. That's going to come in clutch later in the video. Anyways, yeah, we're going to stop doing the piracy, at least for now. We'll worry about doing it later when I need more of those frigate modules. It can be a pain in the butt, say, like you forget to recharge your shields like I do until they go down, and the next thing you know, some of your modules are all blown up, then you have to repair them. It's a big pain in the butt, so I'm not going to bother. Besides, I don't want to piss away my sodium and then run out, so I farmed a little bit more marrow ball. I'm going to infuse it with some carbon so I can get even more sodium. Yeah, because I used it all trying to do piracy and it was a big fat waste of time. You know, sure would have been nice if I would have remembered to buy that ship battery right there. Next, I wanted to try making money a different way, although I didn't have high expectations. We're going to need these green charts right here. When you're plotting your route, if you don't get the exact building type that you're looking for, just keep plotting your route. And if it ever happens to you at some point in time where it doesn't let you because it says there's the same building type up, just plot again over and over until it lets you. Our target is going to be these supply depots here. Now, the very best way I've found to beat them up is just to totally nuke them with your ship, then quickly land before the actual aerial support gets there. Quickly hop out of your ship and then just run away from the Sentinels. You won't have to run very far. They'll lose track of you. Once they do, you can either run back to your ship or just summon it to you as long as you have fuel, then go back and do another one of these supply depots. Realistically though, that's not going to make us daddy space warbucks anytime soon, so I decided to try to be a grave robber. 
Now, if you can, try to find an ancient bones planet or moon when you're trying to look for the buried technology modules. Then you can just, you know, in a way, kill three birds with one stone. Out of all the methods I've shown so far to make a little bit of space cheddar, I would say that grave robbing looking for ancient bones was probably the very best amount that I got paid out for my time investment. That's not too bad. See, some of these bones are actually worth quite a bit. Most of the time, though, you're going to be finding these blue bones, and as you can see, they're not worth a lot, but, you know, it's really easy to find these, and sometimes you can find up to three of these bones in one location. That thermatic condensate came from one of those supply depots we ran. You know, see? It's not too bad money right there doing those either. Although, you know, bones are seeming to be a little bit better. Let's quickly sell all the other odds and ends that keep clogging up my freaking backpack all the time. Look at the bones. Yep. I even stuffed a bunch of bones inside my starship, too. Alright, travelers, time to stop fiddle-farting around making money. It's time to make the real space bucks through perfectly balanced gameplay mechanics. You saw me do this before when I traded in my Radiant Pillar. We're gonna negotiate the price, and then we are going to exchange our current ship for this hauler here. Now, haulers are the very best to do this with because they're worth so much. Now, I'd say you have about a minute before this NPC gets in your ship and flies off, so if you can get there, walk over and communicate with him, you'll actually be able to buy it back for free. You know, perfectly balanced gameplay mechanics. Just before you head up to the scrapping terminal, just make sure to scrap any of the extra technology that's in there. You're going to be farming up a bunch of wiring looms, sodium, and chromatic metal by the time. We're going to be doing this over and over again until I get myself into an ISS class ship. Hopefully that doesn't take very long. Mostly I just need to build my bankroll as quickly as possible because it sure would be a shame if one of those really nice S class haulers flew in and I didn't have enough money to buy it. <laughs> like I literally just bought that A class version over there and looky here an S class version flies right in. Yeah, as you can see I'm pretty excited. It's pretty safe to say you know how the rest of the story is going to pan out. Like, it is seriously one ship after the other. Like, I'm finally getting around to selling some of these scrap items, and that was a huge chunk of money. Oh my god, man. Feeling a lot like Daddy Warbucks right now. Scrapped a few more ships. I'm really starting to stock up on these storage augmentations. Those are going to be really nice. We're going to add so many slots to our S-Class ship. Our first freighter encounter should be coming up here pretty soon within the next few warp jumps once I actually get off my butt and go there, so I really need to start thinking about upgrading her as quickly as possible. Launch thruster upgrades are totally awesome. I'm going to get this thing upgraded so much that I almost basically take off for free. Now don't forget to put like upgrades next to each other for the bonus. If you didn't know this, you can now hop out of your ship, which will create a brand new restore point. Now what you'll want to do is just reload that restore point and all the vendors will be restocked. I used that method to get three of those S-Class thruster upgrades. Now we might as well get these efficient thrusters upgraded as well. We'll also install that free cadmium drive I got earlier for free. Now we can go to any Red Star systems. Economy scanners are the very best thing since peas and carrots, so let's get that started. Now we're going to be working on the teleport receiver. This is definitely a quality of life upgrade. We'll also get my favorite weapon put in there, the positron ejector. Use the reloading method a couple times to buy a bunch more modules here in the system. I'm just finishing out the upgrades. Time to start warping a whole bunch so we can upgrade all of our cargo and technology slots in our suit. Now, the only systems that we're going to be going to are three-star systems. Those are the ones that have the very best economies. From this moment on, every single space station we come to, we're going to be upgrading an exosuit slot. It's either going to be a technology or a cargo. Right now, I'm kind of hurting on technology, so I think we're going to upgrade that. If you feel like it, check this vendor for upgrades, then run over here to this desk right here. There's almost always a pod that has nanites or a navigational data. If you still need upgrades for your ship, just check this NPC to see if they have any good S-Class modules that you like. If you don't see anything you want, head over to the cabinet over here and always check to see if this is an S-Class multi-tool. If it is, I'll cover that when it happens in the video, because it does, I find an S-Class multi-tool. After that, head back into this back room. What we're looking for are travelers, they're very odd looking aliens. Definitely don't see one back here, so head back out of this room and go to the other side and look for travelers. 
It's also worth noting that if I ever happen to come across a worthwhile ship to scrap, then I'm gonna scrap it. If you don't find any travelers, summon the anomaly, then go to the back and upgrade another backpack slot. I'll be running this route over and over and over again in every single three-star system that we work to. Now it looks like we finally made it to our very first freighter encounter, how awesome. Ultimately, we don't want to bother getting one of these little tiny baby freighters. We want to make sure that we get a capital freighter. And in order to get one for free, we need to beat up all these space bad guys, land on the freighter, and tell the captain, sorry bro, you're stuck with your hunk of junk for a while longer. The game really wants to give you your very first freighter that you actually accept to be totally and completely free, so yeah, you want a capital ship, trust me, and I'm going to show you exactly how to get a free S-Class capital freighter. You know, having a really overpowered S-Class hauler really does make beating up the space scumbags really easy. If you want to see what kind of freighter you're dealing with, just hop out of your ship and use your analysis visor on the deck and it'll tell you if it's worth it. This one's a piece of crap. If you're hell-bent on buying it though, you will get it for free. Works just like ships, just go ahead and expect the freighter. And if you like it, you can buy it. And if you don't, you know, like I don't like it, I'm not getting this thing, you can just leave. Instead, just request payment, you'll get some reputation, random items, elements, you'll even get nanites, it's pretty awesome. The very next system, when you know it, there's a traveler right there. See how they look all weird and stuff? The first question you ask them will contain storylines, so I skipped that, but the second one, pay the 100 nanites for the grave location. Whenever I find a traveler, I'll summon the anomaly before I get here, then get my exosuit upgrade. After that, we'll come over here and get the actual glyph. Now, the glyphs are used for portal locations. You can go absolutely anywhere in the galaxy as long as you have all the glyphs. These grave locations will include storylines, so I skip that, but yeah, once you get it done, there's your glyph. Now we only need 15 more. Witness the exact moment when Hawks Gaming becomes a complete and total newbie bonehead. Finding an S-Class multi-tool on a station means that you can actually manipulate it into other multi-tools that are on other planets and moons in that system. I basically had six chances to check and see if any of these skins are multi-tool or experimental, but yeah, instead I just completely and totally blew the pooch. This is the portal address I gave Beeblebum. He actually came over here and checked out all the skins for me. Unfortunately, none of them are alien or experimental. But hey, if you want to get your inner Sherlock Holmes on, come on down to S-Class Multi-Tool the system, head over to any one of those planets and moons, create a save point, Reload your save, then fly back up to the space station. That's how you change them in the cabinet. The other awesome side effect of tracking down the grave locations of travelers is they will give you some really useful technology. See, check this out. Really, really liking that grease shell upgrade that it just hooked me up with. Each and every time you open up one of these traveler packages, you will get a piece of technology that you do not have, so you're never going to get duplicates of something. It's just one upgrade after another. I mean, here's one for my ship. You can get them for your multi-tool. You can get them for your exosuit technology. I mean, it's always going to give you something you can use. It's starting to feel a lot like Christmas. Every upgrade we click. I mean, is it wrong to celebrate Christmas early? I guess that totally depends on when you're watching this video. Wow, how time flies. We've been doing the traveler hunt and the suit upgrades for so long that it is now our second freighter encounter. Usually it's four hours after your last freighter encounter as long as you made five warp jumps. There are two main capital freighter types. There is the Sentinel version, which is this one, and the Super Star Destroyer. Kind of looks like a Star Destroyer in Star Wars. If you warp into a system and you don't like the skin, immediately just reload your save and fly to a different system and check and see if it has the other skin there. Hop out of your ship to create a restore point, then hop right back in. We're going to fly right back out there and go to that capital ship. Now don't worry, there won't be any space bad guys to fight, so this is going to be really, really fast. It is worth noting that three-star systems give you a better chance to spawn an S-Class freighter. I mean, it's not much better of a chance, but it is a little bit better. So, yeah, do all your hunting in three-star systems. I mean, of course we're not going to get lucky and find it on the very first attempt. So right now, all you have to do is just reload your restore point. I think this is my ninth or 10th reload trying to get an S-Class, and there she is, a max slot S-Class freighter. Yeah. These new teleporters are so totally awesome, they promote being a fat guy. 
Of course I'll offer to buy your glorious S-Class freighter, my good man. Although your choice of color scheme is a little bit ugly and grotesque, but hey, we can change that with nanites. That's no problem. Especially when the price is zero. This actually happens quite a bit when you're using your pulse engine around the system and you drop out just before you get to the space station, it triggers all these freighters to spawn. Then totally by accident, because you know you don't do this on purpose, you fall asleep at the wheel, you accidentally leave your finger on the trigger button, randomly your ship just kind of flies exactly where it needs to go and you blow stuff up. Then when you're done, you wake up and fly right back into the space station. On accident. I could be wrong, I think that's 120 slots for your cargo. Whatever it is, the cargo is 100% maxed out. Bada boom, bada bing, this is the very last grave location. We have all 16 glyphs now. After getting that last glyph, I've really been focusing on scrapping ships. Now, I've been holding on to all the stuff, like all the modules we can sell for nanites and all the scrap itself. I'm fixing to get filthy rich here, both in nanites as well as units. Looks like we went from 19k all the way up to 43k nanites. That's pretty sweet. It's awesome scrapping ships when you have all kinds of inventory space. You don't have to worry about running out at any time, so you hold on to all your crap and do one big gigantic sale. For the big scrap sale, we went from 613k all the way up to 2.1 billion. That's totally ridiculous. Alright, this is totally and completely glorious. Right here, travelers, this is a first wave guaranteed S-Class exotic that you can get as long as you have the portal glyphs. Here's the portal address, and I know there's going to be probably thousands of you coming to get this one. How did I find it? Totally and completely by accident, which is totally awesome. I was just trying to shop around for some materials. After you take the portal to get here, fly to the space station, then hop out of your ship to create a restore point. If she doesn't fly in on the very first wave or the second, just reload your restore point. Happy little accidents are really cool accidents when you find first wave exotic spawns because they're so daggone rare. Now just for posterity, I'm going to hop in and out of this because it always spawns on the first wave whenever I teleport here. But I want to show you, if you create a restore point, it's going to work for you as well. Here she comes. She is the fifth ship in on this wave. So I think I'll spend the next hour to hour and a half scrapping these guaranteed exotic ships. I mean, I really can't help myself. It's super duper easy money as well as nanites. Along this journey to upgrading my S-Class hauler all the way to max cargo as well as max technology. I thought this was going to be over a long time ago. I had absolutely no idea that it is 120 slots for cargo and 60 slots for technology. That's, um... A little bit ridiculous yeah most definitely a lot of work but well worth it probably won't be doing this again anytime soon brace yourselves for our last massive sale of modules for nanites this is going to be completely and totally ridiculous basically i have so many starship ai valves the game's bugging out so i have to sell a little bit less so i don't go over the money cap oh man we're getting super close i could probably sell a few more of these ai valves and we'll be right at money cap just throwing it out there, I did give up on upgrading my technology slots all the way because holy crap, man, after 50 it was stupid. Time to find one of the alien portals and put those glyphs to work. Time to hit up the stellar cartographer. We're going to be buying a specific map. We're looking for the alien maps, the ones that are purple right there. Once you have some maps, again, just plot your route. You're going to keep doing that until you find yourself an alien monolith. The alien monolith is the only alien building type that will actually direct you to the portal. Before we head to location, I'm going to summon my freighter really quick, then talk to these little ship guys. The little guys here and down at the trading post will sell you the key that you need in order to unlock the portal. Once you get here, you're going to be asked two questions. The first one you must answer correctly or you're going to have to reload your save. You will now have the opportunity to interact with the monolith for the second time. When you do so, it is going to require the race-specific item for Gek. It is the Gek Relic. Now you have the location for the portal. I made a little portal base off camera just so I can come back here whenever I want to. Let's get this portal charged up so we can actually use it. The cool thing about having all 16 glyphs is, like I said earlier, you can go anywhere within that galaxy. As long as you know the portal address. 
once she is fully charged up you can actually activate the portal plug in the portal address even if you want to do a random one and you can just go where that location takes you if you ever want to stop by and say hi maybe drop a combo here's the portal address this is the bestest portal box base ever located in the very exact same system that has the guaranteed first wave exotic spawn at this point it's getting really close to time to build our epic base on our freighter so we're gonna need to get our hands on a little bit of plant material now you can buy this stuff right up at trading posts like i'm doing right now or you can do this on your freighter buying it from the little ship guys now if you want you can track down the specific worlds that have the right environment for each one of these plants and then pick them with the hazmat gauntlet ain't nobody got time for that you won't need a lot because we can create more as long as you have the corresponding elements time to start building our epic freighter base you want to locate the green looking archway usually i get rid of the cute little hopping blob creature there this time i think we'll keep them for posterity definitely going to remove that table and i'll probably remove at least one of these rooms as well before we go all out on our epic base build i'm gonna need a lot more of those frigate modules right now i believe i only have one or two on hand and as you can see i'm definitely gonna have to farm more modules now well only had one frigate module in my storage container i guess we're gonna get the double cultivation chamber and before we go far more frigate modules because that's gonna take forever let's just start placing down some things i can actually build already which wasn't a lot besides a single storage container now we're gonna go to the black market systems you just need to look for the skull icon oh wow has it been four hours already oh my god my wife's gonna stab me in the face for playing all night you guess it is that time to once again let our bloodthirsty pirate out we're gonna need to farm a boatload of these frigate modules and i can't believe it's another freighter encounter this is gonna make it so much easier unfortunately the big giant capital freighter didn't have any juicy frigate modules on board but it always seems like these little ones right here totally hooked me up finally back again with 42 salvage frigate modules this time you do not want to know how long that took me totally and completely feel like a little kid trapped in a gigantic candy store right now yep just gonna be snagging up everything that i possibly can which i hope is basically everything because my goodness my fingers are little teeny tiny bloody stubs right now this is how you waste 10,000 nanites i'm gonna be buying yellow as well as blue my primary colors now the very last page this is what concerns me a lot of those engines right there start getting super duper expensive bro i'm gonna have to go farm those modules again aren't i screw that noise right now let's just put down a teleport chamber you now like do this every single time i make a freighter i go and build all of these storage units in a row i call this my chariots of fire corridor dun 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 might as well plop down this orbital exocraft materializer definitely gonna need a galactic trade room I'm gonna plop down one of these scanner rooms as well. They're pretty cool. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm going to have to delete both of these rooms. When laying out my double cultivation chambers, I like to have enough room for my plants, but I also like to ring the entire outside of my planting area with a whole bunch of those large refiner rooms. That way we don't have to have a massive farm. Planting farms and harvesting that plant material is a huge part of the Overseer as well as the Scientist quests. So having all this stuff set in place before you even start those quest lines is going to save you like a whole bunch of time. That way you won't be time gated behind anything. God, that's like a lot of freaking refineries. Time to build our Stellar Extractors. Now I usually build about 12 to 15 of these they constantly harvest stuff for you depending on what type of star class system that you're in in a system with the yellow star you're going to be collecting a whole bunch of chromatic metal and if you want to go to the other star types you'll be able to collect the gases as well you can't be the commander of an epic fleet of frigates if you don't build a whole bunch of fleet command center rooms i'm going to build about six or seven of these yeah really surprised you can't build a save point on a freighter so i had to come down here hop in and out of my ship to create a restore point 
went back to that black market system once again farming frigate modules and finally i have every single upgrade that you can possibly have on an s-class freighter totally and completely feeling a huge sense of accomplishment at this point i am going to be changing my freighter colors to blue and yellow yeah i think blue and yellow not yellow and blue that's a little bit too much cheese for me Head back to the Space Anomaly and buy the hydroponic trays as well as every single one of these flower blueprints. After that, hit up each and every one of these NPC vendors and buy every single one of the upgrades. Once you're done, catch the teleporter back to your freighter. Now that we have all of our plant blueprints, we can almost start planting our farms. But first of all, we need to make more plant material. In order to make more frost crystal, you're going to need to actually put frost crystal in there as well as dioxide. To make more gamma root, you'll need to put gamma root in there as well as uranium. To create more star bulb, you'll need star bulb as well as paraffinium. You can create more fungal mold by adding fungal mold as well as ammonia. To create selenium, you just need to add selenium in there as well as phosphorus. Cactus flesh will of course take more cactus flesh as well as pyrite. This last one's a little tricky. We're going to need space turds for one plant and we're going to need mordite for the next. So we're going to need to make more space turds. You want to keep growing your plant material like this until you have enough to start planting your garden. Now that we have some space turds on hand, I'm going to start turning a little bit of it into mordite. This handy little conversion here is going to save you a bunch of oxygen. So say you converted some of the space turds into mordite and you want to go ahead and make some more space turds. Well, you can just add mordite and carbon or mordite and condensed carbon to make a whole bunch of space poop. With all those freaking refineries constantly running, we're able to get to the planting stage pretty quick. The very first thing we're going to plant is the frostwort. This is the main component that you're going to use to make glass. You're going to be making all kinds of glass when you start building a base on a planet or a moon. I'm going to plant some gamma weed right next to this frostwort. It has a couple of uses, one of those being living glass. You'll need the living glass to build biodomes on your super epic omni base. Besides, every traveler should have a huge stock of lubricant on hand, you know, just in case for meditation purposes. Fungal mold is one of the ingredients in acid. The second ingredient is going to be a mordite plant. Notice how I'm not really going ham on placing like a bajillion of each type of certain plant because you don't really need to when you have refineries. True story, Mordite is supposed to smell like a whole bunch of rotten flesh, which kind of makes sense since we created this from a whole pocket full of poop. It's almost like I feel like I need to go wash my hands or put on some gloves or something. This is disgusting. Had a Howie Mandel moment, I had to go wash my hands profusely. Now I'm back, let's plant some star ball. If you have this and some cactus flesh, you can make a polyfiber. And if you combine that polyfiber with a heat capacitor, you can make circuit boards. Go figure, space turds or gut rot flowers are the very last ingredient to make our boatloads of lubricant. I mean, that sounds totally disgusting, but it's not going to stop me from amassing a huge supply of this stuff. Cactus flesh can be used to craft polyfiber. It can also be crafted into unstable gel, then combined with acid to make explosives. Keep in mind, when you're planting cactus flesh and selenium, that stuff takes a freaking month of Sundays to grow. And since they take so long, I'm just going to plant an extra room of each. Now the main reason you're going to want to plant solar vine is if you want to combine that with frost crystals in order to make heat capacitors for circuit boards. All my farms are done, let's build a construction specialist room. Hopped over to the space station in the exact same system. You can come to the very, very back room over here. This is where you're going to find the overseer. Once you hire him, he is going to report back to the exact same place that you made that specialist room. So he's going to be on my freighter right here. When you interact with the overseer for the very first time, he is going to give you a little bit of glass for free. Although, you know, you can make all kinds of that at this point since you have a farm not too far away. Next, he will want you to build a science terminal. Then you'll be able to hire a scientist. Now, I know you're going to have a whole bunch of chromatic metal at this point, so yeah. 
you know what? I think we'll end it right there. There is so much to do, so much to explore, and so much to figure out on your own at this point, Traveler. I've given you all the tools to max out all your technology cargo, as well as money cap, make hundreds of thousands of nanites, find really cool S-Class multi-tools, get a free S-Class freighter, and, you know, blue cheese is totally badass, really it is. Although I have to admit, it does taste and look completely disgusting. Don't you agree? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.